Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session which is the part 4 of the Python ML series and in this session we will be talking about how to visualize our data but before we begin our session let me get a quick confirmation if you guys can hear me or not so if I module to you guys please type yes in the chat box now that I'm getting a lot of confirmation let's begin our session guys and if you are new here don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. Also check out Edureka's machine learning certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now starting with our session, the very first thing that we should do is import a few libraries. So for this session, I'm going to use a Seaborn. And if you already don't know about what exactly is Seaborn and how we use it, we have a tutorial on a Seaborn library. You can check it out later. And I'm going to import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt this is basically the hello world for visualization and after this the very first thing that i want to do is i want to get the columns all right so these are the columns that i have in my data so using the seaborn count plot i am going to plot the count of age first of all give the data is equal to data now let's look at the plot over here guys all right so it's kind of a spread across so we cannot uh, really use the count plot for this same goes for fair as well so we'll begin with gender and when we look at gender so zero is for male population and one is for female population we have already done the one hot encoding in this i mean the existing data had done that so I'll tell you about the one hot encoding while uh, doing the cleaning as well or in during the feature engineering session. So don't worry guys. So now looking at this graph, I can clearly say that the male population is uh, much higher. I mean, it's probably more than 800 people and for female, it's around 450, 400. So this gives us a clear picture of how many uh, people of the same gender were there. Now I'm going to check the siblings and the spouses. Okay, so I'll just copy this. Now what I'll do is I'll write SIB SP yes or to avoid keep crawling again and again I'll do one thing I'll plot it here and this plot is basically giving us the idea of how many siblings and spouses were there for everyone so more than 800 people were single on the ship who had no siblings and no spouses available on the ship and people having one spouse and one sibling you know are given in the orange bar then we have green red purple there is brown and uh, light purple also so this is giving us the uh, the idea of how many people were there with siblings and spouses all right so let's check with people who had children okay zero is i mean there are fairly a lot of people who did not have children on the ship and we'll check for the class now all right, so the first class people are around uh, more than 300 then for the second class it's less than 300 but more than 200 but for the third class people the people who are there in the third class is uh, more than 700 people guys okay so i'm getting a fair idea about how all these uh, columns that i have in my um, data i'll check the embarked column all right so embarked for zero uh, we have more than 200 people for uh, less than 200 for one and Eight, more than 800 for two so now we have to check what exactly zero one and two for this embarked column because since we already had uh, got this data like this where we have downloaded it from that is open ml so okay i'll just tell you what uh, the zero one and two means in this embarked data all right guys so embarkation is uh, nothing but you know the port or where the people were loaded so there were three ports for this uh, titanic data one is southampton one is queensland and there's one more i forgot so this is basically that data so probably um, one of them is going to be southampton so it's not necessarily important for now but if we uh, give it a hue let's say okay before we do that let's uh, check the count for survived as well 
I'm writing it like this because it's uh, given in the data like that. So we can change the column name to survived if you want. All right, guys. So clearly we can see the number of people who did not survive is a lot more than the people who had survived. So this can give you an idea. Now to check the count with respect to the survival column, what we can do is we can add a hue over here. And hue will be this column. And I was talking about how we can change the column name, but I'm not focusing on that because, uh, you know, you can find it out later on in the sessions, the other sessions that we have on our YouTube channel. So over there, there's a Pandas tutorial that you, that you can find. It'll help you guys. All right. So what I'll do now here is I will uh, check the count plot with respect to the survival rate for uh, the gender. So as we can see clearly, the people with who did not survive in the male gender is a lot higher than the people who did survive in the female gender and let's check it for other parameters as well let's say for siblings and spouses and similarly you can find it for all right you can find it for children and you can find it for class as well which is quite important guys all right guys, so there are a few things that I can clearly see in this whole graph that I'm showing you. So basically two driving factors are the gender of the passenger and the class that they were in. So basically it had decided if you were going to survive or not. So these are a few factors that were involved in uh, data mining. So these are the, the features, let's say, that I will be giving my model for the training data because these features I feel are the driving factor into whatever that's going to be the result. So the next plot that I want to show you guys is a rel plot, which is going to give us a scatter plot guys. So whichever value that we give over here. So let's check for age and uh, for fair, since these are the two only two values that are actually all right. So this is a scatter plot guys, which is not exactly giving us a clear picture. So this we cannot use and for this also we can add a hue. Uh, let's say we add survive. All right, we have error. So does not clearly give us any picture. All right, and let's check for a gender. And again, there is no clear picture uh, that I can find from all these plots using the rel plot. So we'll move on to the next plot, which is a categorical plot guys. So for that we will call categorical plot or it's also called cat plot. And for X, we can give, let's say age or we can give sex over here because we need X to be categorical. And why will be let's say why we want to be fair and hue also we can take and for hue we can take uh, let's say survived and data is equal to data. So clearly even though it was in the mail column the people who had paid more than 500 for the fair uh, did survive and we can see a lot of survival dots uh, here in this column so as again there's one more thing that we can make conclusion from is even if you were in the male population and if you had paid a high affair there was a chance that you would have survived all right so one more thing let's check all right so let's check for age okay guys so a lot of people in the male population there's a, there are a lot of dots that I'm seeing that survive that are the age of below 10 or 10 15 maybe and also there are a lot of people who did survive in the you know the population from 30 to 40 and then there's one person who's has survived that is in the bracket of uh, 80 as well and in the female column we can see a lot of dots I mean the dots are everywhere there are survivors and uh, non survivors in each category of the age so it does not really uh, matter which age group were you in for females because there is a uniformity in survivors and both non survivors so we will uh, check for class as well okay this is um, all right so one thing it should be 
let's say age and here we will put class so there is first class second class and third class so uh, clearly a lot of non survivors belong to the third class and uh, there is a second class uh, compartment where i can see uniformity like there are survivors and non survivors and uh, there is a uniformity in survivors for this whole um, column of the first class like there are survivors and both non survivors belonging to each age so now we'll just check for the fair as well so we'll get a clearer picture if you had paid higher would you have survived so it does not uh, paint a clear picture for us and then again there are a lot of survivors i can see only in the first class or first compartment all right so these are a few things that you can uh, you know figure out while using visualization guys so the next thing that i want to plot is a box plot and i'll tell you why i'm uh, doing a box plot and data is equal to data all right so as you can see all these points that are after this uh, t point we can say let's call it a t point all these dots that i'm seeing over here are basically outliers guys so box plot is a, a method of identifying outliers in your data guys so let's check for fair now there are a lot of outliers that are there inside fair and let's check for age all right then again we have for age also there are a lot of outliers and so this is one thing all right so let's just call it as age and for y let's uh, keep class okay let's see if it gives us any graph or not oh yeah this is uh something that you should not do it's pretty clear guys so instead of class let's add gender right guys it's uh, it looks uniform and uh, so instead of okay let's interchange these two so that there is only two options for x axis i'm sorry y axis it's uniform no outliers nothing all right so using the box plot we can identify the outliers and one more thing that i want to conclude in this session is guys using visualization what we have done in this session is we figured out what are the important uh, columns or the features that are going to be useful for us to you know make a prediction model and uh, clearly we can see that there are two or three uh, you know deciding factors when you take a look at all this data first is a uh, the class the you know the passenger class that a passenger was was in and clearly there are a lot of non survivors belonging to the third passenger class and then it plays a important role where or how much money you had paid for that particular class ticket and uh, age also played a uh, you know deriving or you know a very important factor into uh, deciding or you know identifying who survived or who did not survive and uh, also the gender had played a very important role so we had seen in this uh, visualization uh, plots that we did and that is why visualization is a very very important uh, phase of any data analysis that you do either it's state for data science it's for machine learning or for ai as well it helps you into identifying the you know relationship between all these variables so clearly if you just look at the data without visualization it's not hard to identify these uh, relationships but with visualization it becomes fairly easy and with python it becomes even more easier with uh, tools like or you can call it as a library which is seaborn and if you want to know more about seaborn guys i'll just give you an example how you can learn seaborn so this is the seaborn official documentation you can go to tutorial and here are the multiple tutorials which will show you how you can plot what so all the categorical data categorical meaning you know you have only two values let's say for any categorical data they'll be uh, either yes or no it'll be either zero or one so that is somewhat what we call categorical and for categorical data we have different plots that you have there is a distribution of the data set to also you can uh, you know figure out like how your data is distributed which also plays a, a lot of important part when you are figuring out you know 
if there are any uh, outliers or not so this is one thing that you can uh, you know check out and there is linear relationships also you can find out so linear relationships helps you in finding the continuous variables so there are a few you know variables in your data that is going to decide the other one so if they are related it, they form a linear relationship and that's how you begin with so all these uh, plots you can find on the official documentation or if you don't want to do that we have a tutorial on youtube as well and with this we have come to the end of the session guys and uh, i just want to tell you guys if you are new here don't forget to subscribe to edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on edureka in the next session we'll begin with the cleaning part we'll clean our data from the outliers we'll identify them using the iqr and we will replace a few values in them and also for this uh, i want to give you an exercise so i want you to open the official documentation of cmon library and go there and try each and every plot that you can find for this uh, titanic data all right guys see you guys in the next session and uh, also check out edureka's machine learning certification program the link is given in the description box below thank you